Assalamu alaikum. This is Yasmin Mujahid, and you're listening to Serenity, streaming live on One Legacy Radio. Today, we're going to be talking、uh, about a question that a lot of people ask who are thinking about or planning on getting married.、Uh, you know, either they're in the process or they're planning、um, in the near future or they're in the search for, you know,、um, their signif- you know, a spouse. And, and the question is basically,、uh, you know, what exactly is one to expect after the wedding? And specifically, how, what are some, some, you know, given the expectations and then how to be successful? After what you might call the honeymoon period.、Uh, basically, a lot of times, what happens when people、uh, get into marriage,、uh, they come in、uh, often with very wrong and unrealistic expectations. And a lot of the planning, unfortunately,、uh, when you get into、uh, a new relationship or when you're getting into this, this commitment, Unfortunately, so much of the planning goes into planning the wedding itself, the party itself, and very little preparation and planning goes into planning the marriage itself and the relationship that follows, you know, this, this few hours、um, on one day, which, which comprises the wedding party. So, it's important to first understand what are some of the expectations,、uh, maybe false expectations that we do have,、uh, recognize them, and then understand what are maybe what are some of the, the more,、uh, what are the proper expectations, and then some tools. You know, inshallah, we'll, we'll just talk about maybe some tools、uh, to be, you know, to, to get past the, the, you know, that period, which, which we'll, we'll call the honeymoon period. I think just generally, one of the, One of the, the expectations,、uh, and, and I think one of the wrong definitions of marriage in general, is that, that you enter into marriage in order or for the purpose of this other person completing you as a human being. Now, the reason I think this is very dangerous is because that is expecting something from、um, a human being. Which another human being cannot do for you. Another human being cannot、uh, complete you. Another human being cannot really,、uh, you know, if you, if you are expecting or relying on another person to make you happy, then you will never really fully or, or, or you will never really find、uh, consistent happiness. And the reason for that is that the only thing that can give you consistent happiness. Uh, happiness or fulfillment. And the only thing that can complete you is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and your relationship with Him. And so the idea that we are fed since we're very, very young,、uh, so starting from you know, Disney when we're like two years old,、um, this idea is that you, know, you, you, know, you have this. Princess, right? And she is, in, for some reason or another, in some sort of distress.、Uh, you look at,、um, you know, Cinderella, for example, she was basically in an abusive、uh, relation. I mean, she was in an abusive home. Her stepmother、um, is abusive. Her stepsisters are abusive. And she's very helpless. She cannot help herself. She cannot. Uh, you know, get herself out of this situation or do anything for herself. And in fact, she needs to wait for a man, or in this case, a prince, to come and save her and to get her out of this situation, which she cannot、uh, get herself out of, or she cannot,、uh, you know, she, she's not able to be,、um, you know, you know she's, not, she's not able to, to rely on anything outside of this, this other person in order to save her. And that's, you know, that, that's, you know, if you look at,、uh, for example, the story of Sleeping Beauty, it's a very similar theme. With Sleeping Beauty, she's, you know, she's almost basically in a coma, right? She's, she's, she's close to death, essentially. And the only thing that can save her is a king,、uh, is a prince, I'm sorry, coming and kissing her. So again, the idea, and this is, this is the, I mean, this is the message of so many fairy tales, which is that you as a woman,、um, especially uh, uh, you know,、uh, targeting women, you as a woman are not complete、uh, until you, a man comes and saves you. You, will, you need a man to come and save you from something. And so, really, women grow up with this idea that their life doesn't really begin until. They get married until they meet that other person and they get married. And this is a very, this is very,、uh, not only is it, is it inaccurate, but it's a very dangerous thinking. What happens with that is that you have all these expectations, and essentially you're, you're expecting this other person 
to do something which is not in their capacity to do. And that is to save you, to fix you, to fill you, to complete you. These are all things which another human being cannot do for you. These are things that you can only do through and by your relationship with your creator. That's the only way that you are going to be saved or completed. So what happens with relationships, I think, um, with marriage is that when you you have this all these expectations, very, very high expectations, you're coming into the marriage almost um, handing, you know, handing a person, okay, here's, uh, you know, half of a person or here's half of a, here's like a, a shattered heart and I'm expecting you to fix it. I'm expecting you to put it back together. I'm expecting you, you know, you, you're handing someone um, an empty hole inside of you and you're expecting them to fill it. And this isn't something that another person can do. This is only something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can do for you. And so I think what happens then is you you have these expectations, you enter into the relationship, and then you have the crash, right? You have the disillusionment, the disappointment. And usually this will happen uh, very early on. And so you'll that's why you'll see things like I think uh, you know the the highest divorce rates happen in the first year of marriage. Where you'll find these these relationships where it's like they 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 get married and they get divorced very shortly after, and I think that part of it, uh, besides you know that you find out perhaps things you didn't know about the person, but beyond that, I think it has a lot to do with these improper expectations, and and this person is now not fulfilling those expectations, and it's just it's very it's a lot of disillusionment and a lot of disappointment. But the problem isn't with that other person. The problem was is with my expectations. It's with the the improper uh, idea of what marriage is or is not supposed to be. So you know, one you know big another I think big myth that we uh, inherit from the media and from uh, love stories in general is that the, again the purpose of the relationship between a, um, a man and a woman. The, and, and again, I'm going to explain what I mean. There's a difference between the purpose of something, the ultimate, uh, ob, you know, objective and some, you know, uh, you know, benefits of, of that, uh, you know, that relationship. Now, the purpose of marriage, a lot of people think is for me to be happy. That's the purpose of marriage. I'm the reason why I am marrying you is so you can make me happy. And this is seems like, you know, I mean, this just seems like a natural understanding. But in fact, that's actually inaccurate. The reason why I am marrying you is not so you can make me happy. Yes, you may you may make me happy. And that may be a, and, and, and we hope and we make dua, you know, that that would be a, definitely a benefit of the relationship. But ultimately, the reason why I am marrying you is because it is half of my deen and because this is another act of ibadah this is another way for me to get closer to my creator and get closer to my ultimate objective which is jannah inshallah with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now if you look at the two different ideas of why you're getting married they completely revolutionize the way in which you respond and the way in which you act in that marriage inshallah i'm going to take a short break now and when we return we'll examine these two different definitions of what marriage is Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back. You're listening to Serenity on One Legacy Radio, and this is Yasmin Mujahid. We are talking today about uh, the concept of, you know, preparing for marriage, what to expect, and how really to uh, avoid the pitfalls that a lot of us face after the so-called honeymoon period. What we were just discussing was the different expectations and different ways of sort of conceptualizing why are we getting married? Why are we in this relationship? 
And one one of the most common ideas, I think it's the most you know prevalent idea of why why I am getting married to you or why we are getting into this is that I am marrying you so you can make me happy. I am marrying you so you can fulfill me, so you can fill me. It's a very um, almost if you break it down, it's a very uh, self almost like a self-serving purpose and while we all want to be happy obviously the problem is that we are expecting that happiness is going to come from this other person and that's where the problem lies because this happiness does not come from the creation happiness only comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and when we seek the creation to fill us to fulfill that void that we have inside of us we will always end up um, not only disappointed, but then we get very, uh, you know, angry at the creation or at that person because they're not doing what we expect them to do. And this actually creates more problems because now I have all this resentment that you aren't, uh, you're not really coming through. You're not really fulfilling the purpose that you are supposed to be fulfilling, which is to make me happy. So if if we realize that the purpose of marriage is something beyond that, again, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us happiness. And one of the beautiful um, du'as in the Quran where it says, رَبَّنَا هَبْ لَنَا مِنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَّاتِنَا قُرَّةَ آيٌ So we are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this dua to make our our spouses and our offspring the coolness of our eyes. And so to give us that, you know, that happiness, and I mean, that, that contentment w- from them. But at the same time, there's a difference between that being my ultimate purpose. So if something is my ultimate purpose and it's not being fulfilled, that's when I give up. And so the idea here is that, yes, sometimes, um, you know, I am going, this other person is going to make me happy and sometimes they aren't. But again, the ultimate objective in the relationship has to be something beyond fulfilling myself. It's a greater objective. And that greater objective is to bring you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to bring you closer and nearer to your ultimate objective, which is the, the real happiness, right? The unending happiness in Jannah, inshallah. Now, when when you um, view the relationship in that way, you really start to understand, you know, the, the idea of when the Prophet Sallallahu says that, you know, marriage is half of our deen. And so, you know, this is a very profound statement. And if you think about um, marriage being half of the deen, you think about how marriage really helps you, subhanAllah, train. Because, you know, there's different aspects, you know, there might be different ways to learn sabr or to learn shukr or to learn, um, you know, and, and different parts of your life might teach you that. But, you know, marriage really is um, an institution which helps you to build on all of those things. I mean, so really marriage helps train you uh, in so many aspects of your deen. And so it, it, it's, very, it's very befitting to say something, you know, to say that it's half your deen because Subhanallah, it really is, um, it's almost like a training ground for half of your deen. It's really, you know, you can go and you can learn about concepts in lectures. You can go and you can read about concepts in books, but you're not really going to embody a quality unless you actually have to do it, unless it's actually experiential. So, you know, you learn something in lecture and then you have to have a lab, right? You have to have lab where you're applying it. And that's really what marriage is. It's like the laboratory of akhlaq, right? It's the laboratory where you're, where you're actually developing those, uh, those, all those concepts and all those uh, character traits that you read about in books and that you hear about in lecture. You really will not embody them and, 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 and really, um, you know, develop them until you're put in a situation where it's experiential. You're, you actually have to work on it. And this happens in marriage. This happens anytime uh, you're interacting with your family, in fact. And you'll, you'll look at, for example, another statement of the Prophet وسلم, where he says that, um, that the, the best of you is the one who's the best to his family. If you look at that statement, you know, you can understand that it's very easy to be um, 
you know, very, it's very easy to be polite to, you know, your neighbor once in a while or the person at the grocery store because you don't really have to interact with them much. It's very easy to be polite to your boss because if you're not, it, you know, there's some consequence for you. But it's very easy to not be good to your family for a lot of reasons. One is that, well, you know, they're always going to be there. You kind of take them for granted. And so you can and you can kind of get away with more with your family. And so the idea here is that, you know, the person who's really going to be the best is the one who's going to be the best, even when it's easy not to be the best, even when it's easy to, uh, you know, just treat them however you, you know, you have a bad day, you just take it out on them. Because the idea is, you know, they're always going to be there and um, there's no like direct consequence like it would be with your boss. So the Prophet Sallam is saying that the best of you is the one who's the best, even when it's very easy to be otherwise. It's very easy to not be um, caring or, or, or polite or um, considerate. So, so again, the idea of marriage as being um, rather than being, uh, you know, a, a place for me to be fulfilled. Instead, if you look at it as character development, it will completely change the way in which you um, interact with the other person, the way in which you um, respond when things aren't necessarily just the way you want them or when there is disappointment you're able to respond in a way where you you know you can take that and you can say okay this is something that's helping me build my dean again half your dean this is something that's helping me develop myself character development versus if my purpose was you're supposed to be making me happy well then i'm going to expect that at every moment you should be making me happy. You should be fulfilling me. And if there's a moment where you're not, uh, that's the end of the world, right? That's a big problem. And versus, you know, this whole endeavor is is just another path for me to seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's another means for me to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, inshallah, what I, I really want to encourage people, um, you know, get involved, talk, you know, in, in the chat box, um, bring your comments, bring your questions. Uh, we want to make this, inshallah, interactive. We want to make, we want to hear from you. What are your thoughts? What are your reflections um, about what we've said? You know, what are some of the things that you think uh, are, are pitfalls? What are some expectations that you think um, get people, you know, into trouble once, you know, once that honeymoon period is over? Now, the, the other aspect um, with regards to relationships and, you know, trying you know, trying to make it work. I think I, I, I talked a lot about expectations because I think it's so essential. The, 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 the easiest way to avoid disappointment is to manage expectations. And this is just, you know, whether it's disappointment or it's anger, all of these things, the root of it is an improper expectation. So expectations are key. The other issue, which I think we don't put enough emphasis on is what is going to make the other person happy? A lot of times we understand our own, the, the language of our own happiness. We understand our own like love language. Um, what are the things that make me happy? But when you're doing something for the other person, you need to understand what matters to them. So if something, um, you know, for them, there are certain things that, that are important. There are certain um, things that they enjoy. You want to try to do it, uh, do those things versus just, you know, giving in the way that you want to be given because sometimes you know again that what matters to me would might be different than what matters to um my spouse so the you know one thing and, and we've talked about this in in, in other shows but i just want to you know revisit this point because i think it's so important and it has to do with the the um fundamental needs of men and women and and what they basically have have talked about you know relationship experts have have talked about this and again this is just general this is just a generalization um, but in general what they say is that men have their primary need is to feel respected and a woman's primary need is to feel loved and so what happens is when a man feels like he's not being respected or his primary need is not being met uh, he will respond with uh, that will make him close up. That will make him respond um, harshly. And, and it's it's as a result of feeling disrespected. And that's the main thing that uh, that's that's generally most important for a man is to feel that sense of um, that I'm being respected and I'm being um, 
you know, almost uh, that 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 sense of uh, leadership or that sense of, um, you know, that, that you respect that leadership in him. And at the same time, women, uh, their primary need is usually to feel loved. And so if a woman feels uh, unloved for one reason or another, then she will respond negatively to that. And what ends up happening, they talk about this thing called the crazy cycle. And um, what that means is it's this cycle of argumentation that happens between men and women. And when you don't understand the other person's primary needs, it's very easy to get stuck in this cycle, you know, and, and, and couples, they get stuck in this and they can't break out of it. And what that cycle is, is that when a woman uh, feels unloved, she tends to respond with disrespect, that that's the knee jerk reaction of a woman. Um, you know, if you if you do something to hurt me, my knee jerk reaction is to be um, kind of disrespectful or, you know, it's sort of like you know, showing attitude, basically, that's my knee jerk reaction. When I feel like you're being inconsiderate or you're, you're making me feel unloved. That's how I respond. Um, this is just, you know, again, reflex. And as a result of that, the man is feeling disrespected. So then he responds by actually being even more unloving because he's feeling disrespected. And so the very problem was that the woman felt unloved and now she's feeling even more unloved because he's becoming harsher and harsher and colder and colder. And the reason he's doing that is because uh, he's feeling disrespected. And similarly, uh, when... You know, when a woman, um, you know, again, and it's that cycle, right? So that the two are are feeding on each other. And basically what they say that the solution to break out of that cycle is that the man shows unconditional love and the woman shows unconditional respect. And to just, you know, just to sort of explain that very briefly, uh, what, what it's talking about is that even when I don't feel loved, I do my utmost to still be respectful and I can and, and, and they teach, you know, ways in which you can communicate that you, you know, that something hurt you without disrespect. At the same time, you know, you communicate that that, you know, using the I statements and everything that this is how I felt. And you do it in a way where it's um, you're still being respectful, that if you do that, you're much more likely to have. Um, to, to get that love, which you were uh, basically, that's what you're asking for. And, and the reason is that you've continued to be respectful and at the same time communicating your feelings. And similarly with the man, if a man, even if he's feeling disrespected, if he continues to still be considerate and loving towards the woman, he will, um, that that will actually trigger respect from the woman. And so the idea, if both sides are, you know, unconditional respect and unconditional love, that that's really, you know, the only way to break out of this cycle, which so many couples, you know, find themselves in. Um, so inshallah, I'm going to take another quick break. And please, you know, write your comments in the chat box, your questions. And when we return, we'll discuss them. Assalamu alaikum. This is Yasmin Mujahid, and you're listening to Serenity, streaming live on One Legacy Radio. Uh, we've been talking today about expectations in marriage, um, you know, what comes after the honeymoon period, uh, how not to fall into that um, sort of, uh, you know, that disillusionment that might come due to improper expectations. I want to make a couple um, disclaimers, actually. Uh, one thing to make very, very clear when we talk about expectations, again, uh, this isn't to say, uh, and I talked about fulfillment and, and you know, happiness and stuff. I want to make very clear that this isn't talking about uh, that you're supposed to ignore or or tolerate any any form of abuse um, on any level, uh, whether it's, you know, verbal, emotional, psychological, physical abuse, uh, that this is something that, in fact, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not. Uh, want us to tolerate. He says that he does not, um, you know, he does not want us to tolerate injustice on any level. And in fact, when we tolerate abuse um, or injustice, we're actually uh, harming our own our own selves as well in terms of our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because what happens with abusive relationships is that the um, the person who is abused be- begins to fear the abuser. And the only, you know, when I am, um, 
when I am so afraid of another person, then what happens is that I am thinking about that other person. I am, I'm scared. I'm worried. And so actually it's occupying my, my mind and, and the, the, the fear that I should be having for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is now being instead to place, you know, is instead towards this person. And so it is, no one should think that if I'm being abused, that it's somehow more, um, you know, it's better or it's more pleasing to Allah for me to sit and take it. In fact, it's affecting and harming my relationship with Allah because the only one who I should be, you know, fearing the only one who I should be sitting up at night worrying what they think of me or what they're going to do to me is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it shouldn't be another person and if it is another person then that's a problem and we need to break out of that inshallah and may Allah give us um, you know the you know the ability to break out of any type of unhealthy um, abusive relationship on any level now you know again and 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 this is also talking you know theoretically about the idea of uh you know when i go into a relationship and my my focus is instead of being the purpose of this relationship is for you to make me happy at every moment that isn't also to say that if i am you know there's like serious you know voids in my relationship and i am not in any way you know it's not fulfilling me in any way or there are some serious uh rights of mine that are being um neglected that again that is not something that should be ignored that should be addressed and you know marriage is not also supposed to be empty you know it it is yes first and foremost it is for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is a means to get near to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but that does not mean that that there should be no happiness there that there should be no fulfillment um in fact again that is a uh, a benefit of marriage um what i wanted to focus on is that's not the ultimate purpose but rather it should be a benefit and if it is not at all there's nothing there um that also definitely should be addressed uh you know one of the questions that someone had written in the chat box was about discussing that although we don't have expectations you know talking about the importance of still doing things for the other for the other person and that's extremely important that you know giving gifts and and different types of uh you know shows of of care and and, and affection it's extremely important and in fact it's it's the the prophet sallam it's his sunnah that he used to be very loving and very affectionate uh and he would show you know a lot of times unfortunately men think um more so men it tends to be um they think that it, it it's you know you can you love your wife but it's not something that's really shown. It's not something that's expressed. And I mean, the Prophet Sallallahu himself, you know, he's our, our example. And he used to show the, you know, his, he used to show his love for his wife, his wives. And he used to, um, you know, he used to be very affectionate. So this is something that we should strive to do. You know, he says, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said that if you love someone, you should tell them, you know, that, that this is, this is something that you should express. And this brings the two, uh, the couple closer together. So acts of kindness and, and gifts and that kind of thing definitely is something that, um, brings the hearts, inshallah, you know, closer together. And I want to, inshallah, also reflect on the ayah uh, that we usually find on our all of our wedding invitations. And it's the ayah in Surah Al-Rum where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسَكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and from among his signs is this, that he created from yourselves mates. And he, in order that you will dwell in tranquility with them, and he created love and mercy between your hearts. Now, this ayah, subhanAllah, is so profound. One of the things that, it, you know, you, you, you can note about this ayah is it begins by saying that this is a sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then it ends again by saying it's a sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I think that that's so profound because it really shows that even in this relationship itself, even in the, the so-called romantic love, right, that type of love, even that is a sign of God. Even that is a means to get nearer to God because all of the signs, like when I sit and I reflect on the ocean and the sun and the sky and, and all of that, what's the purpose of all of that? It's for me to look at it and for it to bring me near to Allah, for me to realize and learn something about who? About Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his signs. And he's saying that even in this relationship, the focus 
is not the other person. The focus is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that this relationship itself is a pointer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a, and a, and a window into Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a sign of Him. So subhanAllah, even that, where we, where we make it such a, we make the other person really the object of our focus and the object of our obsession. But subhanAllah, even that, that person is actually just a reflection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That, that thing that we share between each other is a reflection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And inshallah, um, I will, um, you know, I want to inshallah end with a dua. Uh, and, and, I, and I pray, um, like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, رَبَّنَا هَبْ لَنَا مِنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَّاتِنَا قُرَّةَ عَيُنْ وَجَعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَامَا we, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make, you know, to make our spouses the, the coolness of our eyes and to rectify any, any, you know, any issues that we may have in our marriages and also to help us to build stronger marriages. أَقُولِ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفَرَ اللَّهِ وَلَكُمْ إِنَّهُ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ سُبْحَانَكَ اللَّهُ وَبِحَمْدَكَ نَشْهَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنْتَ نَسْتَغْفِرُكُ وَنَتُوب